الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد الأنبياء والمرسلين أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Once again, uh, I, Muhammad Tawqir, have been given this opportunity to share a quick reminder with you on this blessed day of Friday. Uh, to begin with, I would like to uh, send my thanks to our Imam Afzal as well as the full chaplaincy team for giving me this opportunity uh, to share a few points, a bit of a reminder for us all. Uh, so that we can reflect, uh, we can ponder, and we can improve uh, the way forward, insha'Allah, Azza wa Jal. First and foremost, I will send the greetings of Islam to all of you. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. May the peace and the mercy and the blessings of Allah be upon you all. And may you continue to prosper in this world and especially in the hereafter. Alhamdulillah, currently we are in the blessed month of the Hijjat al-Haram and now we are moving towards the end of this month. And in this month, Zul Hijjat al-Haram, in the Islamic calendar, this is the final month of the Islamic calendar. And very shortly we'll be coming up to the Islamic New Year. And the new year Islamically begins with the month of Muharram al-Haram. And inshallah, I'm just going to speak... Uh, to you a bit about uh, this month of Muharram al-Haram and just give us a, a couple of reminders of what we learn from uh, these two months of Muharram as well as uh, Zul Hijjat al-Haram insha'Allah Azza wa Jal. If you look at the month of Muharram al-Haram, it is the first month of the Islamic calendar and this is a very special month in terms of uh, how we are to begin our year, the mindset that is given to us at the beginning of this month is very, very important. According to Islamic traditions, there are many events that are linked to the month of Muharram al-Haram. And an individual can go on talking about the various aspects and various traditions that are affiliated and linked to the month of Muharram al-Haram. But especially uh, in this month of Muharram al-Haram, one of the special days of this month is the day of Ashura. The day of Ashura. And this falls on the 10th of Muharram al-Haram. And with the day of Ashura, from the beginning of time up until our time, and even beyond our time up until the day of judgment, According to the Islamic traditions, there are so many um, events that took place and that will take place on this day of Ashura. And it is important for us to understand uh, these different narrations. And it is important for us to uh, see what is going to happen on these days. It is mentioned that there are 25 important events that took place on this day of Ashura. And then inshallah, I will talk to you about the, the, the day as well itself, inshallah. It is mentioned that on the 10th of Muharram al-Haram, the day of Ashura, this is the day when the repentance of Sayyiduna Adam alayhi salam, this was acknowledged by his Lord, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is also mentioned that this was the day, the day of Ashura, when Sayyiduna Adam alayhi salam was born. So this is the birth date of the Sayyiduna Adam alayhi salam. As well as obviously the day he was born, he was made to enter into uh, paradise, into heaven. So this was the day that Sayyiduna Adam alayhi salam entered into Jannah, into paradise. On the day of Ashura, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created many things. The Arsh, the, the divine throne, was created on this day, the kursi, the skies, the earth, the sun, the moon, the stars, and even Jannah, it was created on the day of Ashura, the 10th of Muharram al-Haram. On this day, Sayyiduna Ibrahim alayhi salam was born as well. The Prophet Abraham was born on the day of Ashura. 
it was this day, the day of Ashura, when he was thrown into the fire and he was saved from that fire as well. It is this day, the day of Ashura, the 10th of Muharram, when Sayyiduna Musa, the Prophet Moses, alayhi salam, along with his nation, they were saved from the Pharaoh when the Pharaoh was drowned along with his people. That was the day of Ashura. On the day of Ashura, Sayyiduna Isa alayhi salam was also born. The Prophet Jesus alayhi salam, he was born on the day of Ashura. On the day of Ashura, it was the day, according to Islamic traditions, when Sayyiduna Isa alayhi salam was raised to the skies. On this day, Sayyiduna Nuh alayhi salam's ark, the famous uh, Noah's ark, this was the day, the day of Ashura, when it found land and it uh, stopped on the land. On the day of Ashura, Sayyiduna Sulaiman alayhi salam, the Prophet Solomon, he was bestowed with the kingdom. And it is mentioned that in the entire history, there have only been four individuals that ruled the entire world. And the Prophet Solomon, Sayyiduna Sulaiman alayhi salam, he was one of those individuals that ruled the entire world. On this day, Sayyiduna Yunus alayhi salam, he was taken out and he was brought out of the stomach of the whale. On this day, the eyesight of Sayyiduna Ya'qub alayhi salam was restored. On this day, Sayyiduna Yusuf alayhi salam was taken out of the well. On this day, Sayyiduna Ayyub alayhi salam was relieved from his sickness and his affliction. On this day, rain descended from the sky for the first time. So the first time rain came from the skies, it was the day of Ashura. The fast of this day, this was common amongst the previous nations. And it was said that the fasting of the day of Ashura, this was far, this was compulsory on some of the previous nations. And the Prophet sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam, for our nation, for Islam, fasting on the day of Ashura is not fard, it's not compulsory. Rather, fasting in Ramadan is compulsory for, uh, for the Muslims. However, the Prophet sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam, would keep the fast of the day of Ashura and thus it is a great sunnah, a great way of the Prophet sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam, to fast on the day of Ashura. And finally, and in our uh, ummah from the time of the Prophet sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam, the day of Ashura, what we generally uh, in the ummah of the Prophet sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam refer to uh, as the day of Ashura is uh, the event of Karbala, the battle of Karbala, in which the grandson of the Prophet sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam Sayyiduna Imam Hussein radiallahu ta'ala an, he was martyred on this day. And along with his other companions, his other family members, uh, they were all martyred on this day of Ashura. And generally, this is what we refer to uh, when we talk about the day of Ashura. Our uh, memories, they all turn back towards Sayyiduna Imam Hussein radiallahu ta'ala an, and the family of the Prophet sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. From this, what we come to learn is how important it is for us to understand the dates of Islam. This one event, one date, sorry, it has so many events that are linked to it. So we should be very mindful in focusing ourselves on making sure that we are able to understand, we are able to realize the importance of these days of the Islamic calendar. Unfortunately, nowadays in our society, the vast majority of Muslims, uh, we don't know the important dates. And it's very famous um, saying in the English language that, that those people that don't have a history, they don't have a future. And we can take from this that if we do not know our history, we will not know our future as well. So it's very, very important for us to learn the history uh, and understand what has happened in this world, what has happened in Islam up until now. Islam did not reach us 
just like this. There's great sacrifices behind this as well. And what we need to understand in our day and age is that we need to also sacrifice our internal desires. We need to sacrifice ourselves for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If we look at the name of the religion, Islam, there are many narration, there are many meanings given to this word Islam. One of them is peace. Another major meaning of the word Islam in the Arabic language is submission. And when we refer to Islam, what we mean is that a Muslim, he submits himself to the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is a very important concept in Islam where we as believers of the religion of Islam, we as followers of the Prophet sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam, we submit ourselves to the call of our creator Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and once we are able to do this once we have successfully submitted ourselves to Allah then we will start beginning to gain what we want and that is the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala everything in this world has a purpose and the Quran tells us the purpose of humankind is to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The purpose of mankind is to worship Allah. So we need to make sure that on a day-to-day -day basis, we are taking our time to show our devotion, show our submission towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Worship Him. Definitely Islam is a religion of spirituality. Islam is a religion of submission. We believe in the state of our heart. It's very important for us to understand that once and uh, once again, we need to be focused on the state of our heart. What is happening with our heart? Are we getting a peaceful heart? Are we getting comfort in our heart? Are we feeling tranquility in our heart or not? We need to be working towards this. And religion, Islam is the way forward for this. Alhamdulillah, through the grace and through the uh, mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we believe that in the remembrance of Allah, there is the peace and the tranquility of our hearts. And why we believe this is because Allah states this in the Quran itself. Allah mentions that verily within the remembrance of Allah lies the peace and tranquility of the heart. And when we are aspiring to gain this peace and tranquility, we need to submit ourselves towards Allah and His Messenger sallallahu ta'ala Alayhi wasallam. Islam has given us a way of life. The Prophet sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wasallam has give, shown us how to live our life. The reason why the Prophet sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wasallam was sent to humanity was as an example for us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he tells us in the glorious Quran, the meaning of which is that I have sent the Prophet sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wasallam as the best of examples. The Prophet sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wasallam in one narration, he himself, he mentions one of the reasons for, him, for his arrival in this world was to perfect good character. Now we need to think that through the teachings of the Prophet sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wasallam, have we been successful in gaining that good character or not? Is our character a character that people like to be around? Or is our character such a character that even our close friends, our close relatives, our close family members, they are disgusted by our character and want to, go, want to move away from our character, want to move away from ourselves? This is a question that we need to ask. And this is something that we need to reflect upon as well. We need to ponder that what is our character? It's important for us to realize the importance of good character. Good character makes an individual. Having the hospitality in yourselves, having that smiling nature in yourself, 
having that happy nature inside yourself, this is what makes an individual. We don't want to live our life where people are not wanting to be around us. We don't want to live a life where individuals are afraid of us. Rather, we should be welcoming. Rather, we should be those individuals that people want to be in our company. There should be times where people are saying that, when can I be with such and such individual? Is our character such or is our character not as such? If we look at the life of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, one of the reasons why he was successful, one of the reasons why the entire Arab Peninsula eventually turned towards the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, one of the reasons for this was his beautiful character. When people would come to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, they would fall in love with him Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He was very kind. He was so merciful. He was very compassionate. Where are these traits in me and you today? We need to also build these traits inside ourselves. People, when they come to us, must feel welcomed. People, when they come to us, must feel loved. Today, we live in a society where individuals, they need that love. Individuals, they want that compassion from one another. We are a humankind. We are a race together. We live with one another. We spend time with one another. Each and every one of us has that soft spot inside us. Let's try not to cover that soft spot. Let's try to uh, increase that soft spot inside us. Be practicing believers. Live your life in accordance with the teachings of the glorious Quran, the Sunnah of the Messenger Sallallahu Ta'ala Alaihi Wasallam. Remember, like I mentioned, these days of Ashura. If you look at the Islamic calendar, I've just mentioned the month of Muharram al-Haram is the first month of the Islamic calendar. And Zul Hijjat al-Haram is the final month of the Islamic calendar. The first month, like I mentioned, all of these different events that took place. Along with this, the event of the sacrifice and the martyrdom of Sayyiduna Imam Hussein radiyallahu ta'ala. And I'm sure Imam Afzal Sab and the other Imams, they will discuss the event of Karbala, uh, the struggles of the family of the Prophet sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa with yourselves. But what we realize is that this month, this is the month of sacrifice. This is the month where Imam Hussein radiyallahu ta'ala an, he sacrificed himself and his family for the sake of Allah and his messenger sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. Then if you look at the end of the month of uh, of the Islamic calendar, sorry. If you look at the final month, Zul Hijjat al-Haram, the month that we are currently in, then you will remember last a couple of weeks ago on the day of Eid, we talked about uh, the sacrifice of Sayyiduna Ibrahim alayhi salam and Sayyiduna Ismail alayhi salam. So the first month is talking about sacrifice and the final month is talking about sacrifice. It is as if the entire, when you begin something and you end with the same thing, it means that everything in between is talking about the same aspect as well. So the whole year is a year of sacrifice. And what do we need to sacrifice? Nowadays, in our, the day and age that we live in, we don't need to sacrifice our life. What we need to sacrifice in the day and age that we live in is our desires. We live in a very materialistic world. A lot of the society is very materialistic. All we have in front of our eyes is wealth, fame, honor, big banks balances, we want huge cars, we want big mansions, all of the materialistic things of this world, that is what is in front of our eyes. But as believers, as Muslims, according to the Islamic traditions, we know that this world is not the end of all. What we call death, that is the beginning of the new life. That is what comes afterwards. And that's very, very important for us to understand as well. That one of the fundamental beliefs of a Muslim is life after death. Wal ba'thi ba'd al And we will be resurrected and there will be a life after death. 
First, there will be the day of accountability, the day of judgment, where we will have to give account for our deeds. What did we carry out in this world? That is the first thing that we will have to go through. We will be asked for every single thing that we did in this world. And then ultimately, we will gain the reward of our actions. It could be either paradise or it could be hell. This all depends upon our accountability. And if Allah wills, we know through our Islamic traditions that if Allah wills, he will shower his mercy upon us. And without even taking our account, he will enter into Jannah, inshallah. And this is what we hope for. But in this world, we need to live our life for the hereafter. A very famous example that is given uh, in the Islamic traditions is that the Prophet Sallallahu Ta'ala Alaihi Wasallam, he has told us to live your life in this world as a traveler. We are only here for a very short amount of days. Nowadays, the average lifespan is maybe, I don't know the exact uh, figure, but might be around 60 to 70 years of age. Very rarely nowadays you'll find anyone going beyond this 60 to 70 years of age. This is the average lifespan. But you know in your society, in our society, how many individuals are leaving this world without getting to this age. Death doesn't have an age. It's a reality. The only reality of life is death, that we are going to die. And as believers, as Muslims, the Prophet Sallallahu Ta'ala Alaihi Wasallam, he has advised us to remember our death on a regular basis. We must remember our death because why as believers, as Muslims, we do not live our life for this world. We live our life for the hereafter. In this world, if our life is only 60 to 70 years of age, so let's push the boundaries a bit. Let's take it to 80, 85, even 90 years of age. This is nothing in comparison to the life that is going to be after we have died. Once we leave this world, the life on the hereafter, that is for eternity. There will be no death once we have died from this world. So live your life as true believers, practicing believers. Someone who practices, he will be a good person in society. Someone who is truthful to Allah and his messenger sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam, he will be a successful individual in the society. Islam taught us good character. The Prophet sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam showed us good character. We need to build this good character inside ourselves so that we are able to gain the benefits of this. The month of Muharram al-Haram is very fastly approaching. We must gain the blessings of this month, insha'Allah, and uh, fully work towards gaining the blessings of this month as well, insha'Allah, Azza wa Jal. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shower his mercy upon us all. On behalf of myself, uh, as the month of Muharram al-Haram approaches, the new Islamic year approaches from myself in advance. I would like to congratulate uh, you all on the new Islamic year that will be coming in the next coming days, inshallah. May Allah shower his mercy upon us all. I'd like to, at the end, once again, thank Imam Afzal Saab and the chaplaincy team for giving me the opportunity once again to share my Jumu'ah reminder, my quick reminder on this day of Friday. Uh, as you know, Alhamdulillah, the Prophet Sallallahu Ta'ala Alaihi Wasallam, he has stated, uh, rather Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala has mentioned that advice as giving advice it benefits. So we, sh we try every now and again to share a few pieces of advice so that we may gain benefit, so that we may be reflect upon this, uh, these pieces of advice, so that we may ponder upon them. And ultimately, we can work towards a better life in this world and ultimately gain a better life in the hereafter. Uh, once again, Jazakallah Khaira. Uh, great thanks to Imam Afzal and the chaplaincy team. Now, inshallah ta'ala, Imam Afzal will share his uh, few announcements and then he will make a short dua as well. Uh, hopefully, that day won't be far that uh, you will see myself along with the other brothers of the Sakina team back in our sessions. Uh, this pandemic is stretching. 
uh, we hope that uh, we are able to gain the benefits, uh, the best of this pandemic. May Allah protect you, protect me, protect your families, protect my family uh, from this pandemic and the effects of this pandemic. And hopefully everything goes well very soon. We'll be back with you physically, inshallah ta'ala, in HMP Rai Hill, uh, back with our sessions. And inshallah ta'ala, our full Sakina team will be back with you as well, inshallah azawajal. Once again, jazakallah khaira. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.